We are counting you down until tip-off in tonight's Southern Conference matchup between ETSU and UNC Greensboro at the top of the hour. And you can bet it will be rocking inside of Freedom Hall for this huge Southern Conference rivalry. Hello and welcome into the Bask ETSU basketball pregame show presented by Food City. I'm Heather Williams. While Chattanooga may be ETSU's main rival, the rivalry between UNC Greensboro is right up there, especially given those two program success in recent years. News 5 Sports Director Casey Getz will be on the call for tonight's game, and he caught up with head coach Desmond Oliver to preview the Bucks and the Spartans. This game on Wednesday will be kind of the halfway point of the SoCon. When you look at the ETSU roster, two names jump out at you, Ladarius and Ty Brewer. It's not often you get a pair of brothers, especially two that are so important to the success of a team. As long as they can remember, Ty and Ladarius Brewer have been together on a basketball court. Me and him, we know uh, where he, where we are and where each other's going to be at. We know how each other play, so he's, you know, it makes it kind of easy. Although they look alike, their personalities off the court couldn't be more different. We get, we get along a lot more, I would say. You know, there there is no basketball, there's no competition area, so we just, you know, two brothers just hanging out, kicking uh, kicking it all the time. I'm more up-tempo. <laughs> on, on the court, he's more relaxed, and I'm more up-tempo. Like, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go try to get every rebound, every lob. He rebound as well, but he's more of a smooth, like, slow-paced type of player. As a result, they have their moments, like most brothers. Sometimes we may bicker at home. Sometimes we may bicker on the court. I mean, it's just it's a brother thing. Plus, we're pretty close in age, so there's no big brother, little brother type deal. And, of course, he's bigger than me, so that wouldn't really work anyways. But at the end of the day, they wouldn't change the experience of playing together for anything. I like say if, you know, we, we're in there playing, wrestling, they know if, if he's wrestling, I'm somewhere around coming to help out. So, and if I'm wrestling, he's finna come within two seconds. So, Growing up, we always fought because we were kind of close in age, so nobody's going to really be able to get in between us now. We all know how raucous Freedom Hall can get in a big game. Coming up, we'll introduce you to the man who helps get the crowd hyped in all the biggest moments. Plus, new ETSU head football coach George Quarles has been on the job for a month. We sit down with the new head man to talk about what it's like to be back in East Tennessee. You may not know the name Brandon Hudson, but if you've been to an ETSU basketball game in the last several years, you've definitely heard him. News 5's Jarvis Herod introduces us to the voice of Freedom Hall. Here now. ETSU head coach Randy Sanders shocked Bucks fans when he retired in December, and the man who will follow in his footsteps will have quite a challenge. ETSU's in a great place right now. We need to make sure we, you know, keep it going in that direction. Still to come on the Food City pregame show, sports director Casey Getz goes one-on-one -on -one with George Quarles. Plus, we'll hear from Bucks players as they get ready for tonight's showdown with UNCG. Both ETSU basketball teams have new head coaches this season. The ETSU football team will also have a new head coach for the upcoming season. George Quarles was hired just over a month ago to be the new leader of the Bucks football program. Sports director Casey Getz recently sat down with Quarles that they talked about bringing the program back and how far the Bucks have come in a short time. I think Maryville College. 
We all know the recent history of the Bucks and the Spartans, but what will this year's matchup look like on the hardwood? We'll break it down for you when the Food City pregame show returns. Food City is proud to partner. Let's be clear, this is not your father's UNCG team. Wes Miller has gone to Cincinnati and most of the players from their recent run gone to graduation. But that doesn't mean this won't be a tough matchup. They play a lot of defense. Uh, we were just watching some film uh, and they, they, you know, they try to get a lot of steals. I think they're the highest in steals in the SoCon. So taking care of the ball is definitely going to be a big key for this next game. The pressure that they bring on the defensive end, competitive, competitiveness, and uh, just having to take care of the ball against them because they turn teams over a lot. They're going to pick up 90 feet and off, and we're going to pick up 90 feet, but it's just, it comes down to who's going to take care of the ball. I mean, it's probably going to be a guards game, but you never know what's going to happen on Wednesday. Now tonight is a big game for the Bucks as they fight to stay in the top half of the SOCON standings and within striking distance of first place Chattanooga. Right now the Bucks are in a four-way tie for fourth and the Mocks, Furman and Mercer are in front of them. The Bucks are tied with Vofford and VMI at four and four in the league. Tonight's opponent at UNCG is just a half game back at three and four on the season. So let's take a deeper dive into the numbers tonight. The Spartans have the top scoring defense in the league giving up just over 63 points per game. The Bucks give up nearly 72 points per game. Both teams are in the bottom of the scoring in the conference, so the Bucks do score about seven points more per contest. And the guys to watch on each team, DeMonte Buckingham for UNCG and David Sloan for the Bucks. So, which five will get the call against the Spartans to get the start? And what are the keys to the game? Color commentator Bruce Tramberger joins us when the Food City pregame show returns. Time to take a look at the probable starting lineup for tonight's game. That looks a lot like it has for the last several games. David Sloan is at the point with Jordan King and Ladarius Brewer flanking the guard spot. Ty Brewer and Jaden Seymour are the two big men. So, what are the keys to tonight's game? Let's bring ETSU Cullen commentator Bruce Tramberger in for tonight's Tramberger Talk. So if you're ETSU, you want an up-tempo game with a final score in the 80s. Best way to get there, 75 to 80 possessions. Now, how do you do that? Crank up the heat defensively, force turnovers, transition defense into offense with quick hitters. By contrast, UNCG wants to slow this down. They'd like a final score in the 60s. In order to ensure that, they'd like to have 60 possessions or less. And they've done that a couple of times this year. What's the best way to do that? Number one, balance the floor in defensive transition. Number two, offensively, take care of the basketball because you're gonna take possessions deep into the shot clock. And most importantly, crash the offensive glass. Not so much for second and third chance opportunities, but to extend possessions and to force ETSU into a guarding position for long periods. Thanks for joining us. Casey and Bruce are next with the call.